Hello and welcome back on my channel Sheep Hello Workshop and in this video I'm going to show an experiment about 3D printing and sheet metal in combination. So for that I needed some help of a company 3 Dimensionals, they are professionals in 3D printing and I was thinking well what could I print? So I had that idea to print the bubble wheels so I have a, in the YouTube shorts there was some bubble wheels in metal so these are the original one in metal I made so if you use it you get you know a decoration of bubbles in metal so i was thinking let's draw then and i used the cat program you can use any cat program like a free cat or fusion or autodesk inventor it doesn't matter so i made those two wheels as a step file and i was thinking well let's send those step files to three dimensionals and i asked them can you please make the procedure how it is made from the beginning until the end so i will say let's have a look how they did it because i think it's quite interesting hello today we are printing the bubble wheels for the sheet metal workshop i'm gonna lead you through the printing process so we're gonna first slice the parts that we received and then send the files to the printer we will give you a brief overview over the printer and then we will show you, of course, also the post-processing and all the metal work will happen at the sheet metal workshop. Now we got the files in, we are now gonna slice the parts in Preform. Preform is the slicer for the complete Formlabs ecosystem. In there, you find set parameters for all of the Formlabs materials. This is a big positive because like this, you can just start printing and don't need to find parameters for materials, especially in SLA and SLS. This is way more difficult than in FDM. The slicer is free and within the dashboard of Preform, you can also see your material consumption, um, print times, you can schedule prints and manage a print queue. All of these functions come free and Formlabs is repeatedly updating Preform, so you'll find even more features in the future. And it will send it to the printer. Now we see that the printer is running its uh, preprint settings. For this, it will scrape along the build plate. And like this, it can check if there's any remaining parts on the build plate. So we can be really sure that we have good layer adhesion and there's no chance of puncturing the tank exactly. Now we should have our tools ready in one hour and 10 minutes. The material usage here was about 100 milliliters. So with the material costing 175 euros per liter, we also have quite a cheap tool that we have access to really, really quickly. So if there's a custom job and you need a tool, I think within two hours, we can reliably produce these tools for sheet metal forming. So now our print is finished. I'm gonna put some gloves on. While working with resin, um, it's important to protect yourself. So when removing supports, it's also advisable to wear goggles. Um, if you handle it a lot, this is really the bare minimum that you should do. These resins are sensitizers. So even if you have just tiny exposures again and again, it's really good to wear these gloves. The nice thing with Formlabs resins is they are have always been TPO free. So even before the regulations changed, these resins were, uh, had a really low odor and you could work with them um, also in smaller spaces than our big showroom here in Cologne. For us, usually you would go straight from the printer into a washing solution. But for us, um, we have one large washing station downstairs. So I'm gonna take the build plate out and go downstairs and then continue working on the parts there. To remove it, you just take the build plate out. I have to be a little bit careful so we don't drip. And close the lever. Um, Formless will ask you about your print success if your printer is in the network. Um, it will be stored, otherwise we now have our fixed, uh, finished part. And with these parts, we're gonna go downstairs, wash them, and then go into the drying step. So now we're downstairs in our facility where the workshop is to repair printers and main, uh, maintain them. Um, behind us is a print farm, so we, that's why we have the washing station down here. So even larger batches from the Form 4, for example, can be washed down here. 
to take the part off, we just sit the build plate down. And since we are working with a flexible build plate here, to loosen the prints, we just flex the build plate. And now we have our parts. Um, we, you see that we have supports all along the bottom surface. I know that these parts will cure really well even without the supports because we have fairly even wall thicknesses. If we have really large and small whole sur um, wall surfaces, it, sometimes it's advisable to cure the parts with the supports on. So now we just remove it and I'm gonna take one spatula and remove all the small loose parts from the bottom of the print. And like this, the part is ready. I'm gonna flex the build plate here again. Now also this part is loose. We just peel off the supports. Both our parts are now ready and they need to be washed. Again, with foam labs, you have set parameters. So for these materials, we wash them in TPM, which is a non-flammable washing solution that applies really well to industrial and professional settings. We lay them down here. I just press start. The 15 minutes is already set for the washing. And yeah, we see each other in 15 minutes when the parts are ready. So um, the parts are washed. Since we are washing with TPM, we have one extra step that you don't have if you're washing with isopropyl alcohol. But in this case, I have this little basket here. I'm gonna take the parts out. Um, if you look at them quickly, you can see if there's like small specks of resin left. They look perfectly washed to me. Um, now they go in here. This is just normal tap water. When we are washing with TPM, we have like a slightly soapy film on the part and this needs to be removed. So these parts just need to sit in here for a minute and then they're ready. So now we are drying the parts and we're using compressed air. So safety first, put the goggles on. We take our parts out. We could leave them now outside just to try on the normal air, but um, we're gonna use a little bit of compressed air. Since these materials are quite rigid and they don't take on so much water, and we also have quite thick walls, we can go straight into curing with them. For other materials like TAF 1500 V2, I would recommend leaving the parts overnight so just the rest of the water can evaporate and then going into curing. But with these parts, they're quite solid. I'm not worried about warping or any distortions on them. So yeah, let's put them in the cure and then we are almost ready to use them. We are back in our showroom upstairs and I wanted to show you the small wash because you saw me taking the parts off the build plate before washing them. Um, in a normal setup where you would use the small um, form wash second generation with the form 4, you would just put the build plate in and then lower it into the isopropyl alcohol so you would get clean parts and also a clean build plate where you can just start your next print. We did it like this because the parts are quite small and we just have the large wash down there, downstairs. You could set up the arms, but for these parts, I was just quicker doing it like this. Uh, it really depends on your setup, but this is the wash that corresponds with the Form 4 printer. The next step is curing. Now we have parts that are at 80% strength and we need to post cure it to get to the full mechanical properties. For this, we use a UV oven that cures with UV light and also temperature. For these materials, we want to cure them around 70 C and also the UV. So we have parts that are me mechanically stable and as strong as we want them to be. Now that they're in here, we need to set the right parameters for curing the parts. As I said before, with form labs, you get um, proper profiles for most materials that um, are supplied by form labs. You just go in here 
and you look for the right material. So we printed them a rigid 4000 V1. We go in here and we see the curing time is 80 degrees C and six minutes. I would cure them a little bit more because we're gonna put them in quite a lot of stress. So I will put them around 10 minutes and press start. Now the chamber is preheating and as soon as the chamber is preheated, then the heating cycle will start. So now they're in the cure and the cure is currently preheating. As soon as it's preheated, it will start the curing cycle. You see it that you see the switch from the preheating to the curing because then the UV light turns on and the parts glow quite nicely. It's a nice visual feature as well in the workshop. Um, as we see, the temperature is rising quite fast. So in the second gen, we have better insulation, stronger um, heating and curing elements. So we can cut down even more on the curing time. So we washed for 15 minutes. Now we're gonna cure for 10 minutes and then our parts are ready. So in total, without the manual labor and the waiting, I think, yeah, reasonably within two to three hours, we have our tools. So welcome back. The parts are finished curing now, so we can take them out and I will handle the shipping process so we can ship them to the sheet metal workshop. So now we can take these parts out of the chamber. They're still a little warm, but uh, safe enough to handle without burning. And after curing, I don't need gloves anymore because these parts are fully cured. They're safe to handle. And uh, we can already see they interlock very well. They run pretty smoothly, the mechanism. So we can now sh pack these up and send them over to the sheet metal workshop. Okay, well, I think it was quite interesting to see how they made those wheels and now the package has arrived. So the package has arrived, it's originally closed. So this is very, really experimental also for me. So I'm gonna open it, you know, a quick unbox. So here I'm gonna do, do try this for the first time. Well, there are, they are. So we have here the wheels and I have to say, well, it's quite good printed out, I have to say. Here the other one, so, well, that is the effect I want. So now the next thing is, the big question is, do they fit on the machine? So let's have a look. So this is the under wheel, let's have a look if it fits. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, it fits, that's good, so. That's one screw, and now we hear the upper wheel. Also fits, so I'm gonna set it up. Okay, tie it a little bit up. Okay, well that's it actually, to see if they are Exactly centered. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, well, that looks good. Now I have here some material. So I have here aluminium 0 0.6, one millimeter. I have zinc also 0 0.6. Millimeter. I have here also zinc 0 0.8 millimeter and then we have stainless steel 0 0.5 millimeter and 0 0.8 millimeter. So we're going to test what it can do. So I'm going to just start with 0 0.6 millimeter. So just have a look. Well, that looks very good. You see, here's a good result. So, oh, you can see here from the aluminium, it took the color. So I'm gonna try another one. So I go a little bit deeper. Well, that looks good. So 0 0.6 makes bubbles, no problems. So next one, we're going to do aluminium. And 
I mean, I can also show it. Zero, okay. So this is one millimeter. Okay, well, let's have a look. Also no problem, so I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I'm not going too deep. Well, that works really good. I'm really impressed. Well, that was aluminium, so now we're going to switch to a little bit stronger material, and this is zinc, 0.6 millimeter thickness. So let's have a look. Okay, so a little bit deeper. Well, that is also good, so you can also 0.6, no problem. And now it's gonna be starting to be challenging, I think. So 0.8, so we're gonna check this also, 0.8. So we have here zero, and now we're going to check it. So 0 0.8 millimeter, okay. No problem, so a little bit deeper. Again, second time. And we have here also a good result, so I can really say nothing about the quality. So, I'm impressed. So, it's my first 3D print. And it's an experimental. I have to say, three dimensions did a good job with those wheels. So, another test. Uh, 0 0.5 thickness, stainless. Okay, I think every thin material will do. Here we go a little bit deeper now also. And also stainless steel, we have a good result, no problem. It works. So now the final one, the final one, 0 0.8 millimeter thickness stainless steel. And again, I want to prove it. So here we have zero and let's have a check. So 0 0.8 millimeter thickness. Okay. Well, I'm excited. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Next one. Well, I have to say, I'm very impressed and uh, I'm very happy with the result of it. So, uh, well, I have to say this video isn't a sponsor video and I'm not advertising, it's a pure experimental video and I think it was worth to do it. So if you are considering buying a 3D printer or you want to combine it with sheet metal, well it's important you know how the material and what material you can print because I didn't knew. I don't have any experience with 3D printing. and. I did this as an example, so if there is anybody out who has also the possibility to make 3D prints, you can test it. Otherwise, you can also leave a message in the comments about 3D printing. If you're interested, don't forget the thumb. And I say thank you for watching and see you in the next video.